We actually um, are going to start with uh, a question that came in from a member. Uh, it's from Hano. And it says, uh, they wrote, during and after the Second World War, my family has suffered tremendously under the Russian army. The most horrendous acts have been committed against the women in my family. Generational trauma was created, carried over to the next generation. I've been able to start the healing journey with mindfulness after suffering with complex PTSD. The war ripped open the closed memories of my grandmother. And I remember the stories my great grandmother told me about some aspects of the chaos of invasion of the Russian army into, our, into their home village. I grew up next to the Iron Curtain. The fear of war was reflected in air raid drills in, my kin in kindergarten and primary school, witnessing a divided world from my bicycle. Seeing after the wall fell, the impoverished parallel world that was East Germany, the damage that was done to nature, to society by Soviet occupation. Despite all of this, I want to extend compassion to everyone involved in the war in Eastern Europe. I see that suffering is omnipresent and I cannot be healed by picking up a weapon. How can I strengthen my metta practice to be stronger than the natural feeling to despise the Russian army? What can I do to strive towards peace on all sides? This is a question from Hanno. So friends, just to say, there's the reason that I wanted to begin with this. Um, I, I was so personally moved when I read it. I feel like Hanno offered us a gift in sharing their experience. And, um, and what really struck me was how many of us in some deep way have that same inquiry, even if we're not as close in to the violence right now that we're all focusing on. But that inquiry of when there's been injury, um, what, what will help us to keep our hearts open, to not uh, fixate anger or hatred on, a, on an individual or humans? I mean, you know, most of you are familiar with that a uh, very powerful teaching that hatred never ceases by hatred, but by love alone is healed. That's the ancient and eternal law. We know that. And yet, every one of us in some way, I think, gets hooked by um, blame and, and hatred and anger. So it's a powerful sentiment, and Hano's inquiry just speaks of their longing to have an awakened heart, which is so beautiful. And I'm just curious, as you listened, how many of you feel like that's your inquiry too, in some way? Can I just see, maybe hands or mechanical hands, how many could relate to that inquiry? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, a few comments on it. When there's injury, the first step is not to move or try to move right into forgiveness or compassion for another. That's often a, a mistake because we're bypassing the realness of our feelings. So if um, generations of an invading army have created trauma for our family, or if within our family we've been violated, whatever, whatever the injury, the first step is to bring a really deepened presence to our anger and to our hatred, if it's there. It's not like anger is bad. There's, a, there's an intelligence. It's saying pay attention. So for you, Hano, the feelings of aversion towards the Russian army start there. Start where we are. That's really, it has integrity. And feel the aversion, and feel the anger if it's there. And then open to what might be under it. Because under anger and under aversion is some hurt, some pain that wants attention. There's something we care about. I always find that under anger there's something I care about. 
that's being violated. So open to what's under it. And, and then when you get right to the bottom of that, to the deep sense of um, grief for what's lost and longing for healing, hold that with compassion. And once you've gotten to the core of what's under the pain and you've held it with compassion, then that compassion will naturally extend. And what we'll see when we look at others, that it's not a Russian army that we're angry at. It's not even Putin or an, or an individual bad actor. It's the forces of greed, hatred, and delusion that run through all beings that out of conditions get ex are getting expressed. And it becomes much easier to remove the blame from particular humans. That doesn't mean we don't hold them accountable. It just means our hearts are not shut down against the humans. We remove that kind of hatred and it allows us to then respond to the situation really from our intelligence. We can't respond from our full intelligence if we're angry. You know, one of, one of my friends, Ruth King, says that, you know, anger is initiatory, but it's not transformational. Does that make sense to you? That initiates, it energizes, it's intelligent, but it doesn't transform. So to transform, we need to do that inner process of, of compassion to where the pain is so that we can touch into the authentic compassion and intelligence that lets us respond to the uh, recurrent patterns of violence. So Hano, bless you, thank you, and in a deep way for, for the inspiration of your longing, because I really believe that if we have a longing to open our hearts more, that will carry us.